viewing. Are you set, uh, Lisa? Yep. Tammy? <laughs> All right, Melissa, Wait. you're okay over there? Okay. I, uh, I will call this meeting of the Board of Trustees for the Village of Cambridge, our meeting of October 8th, 2024, to order, please. Roll call. <coughs> Um, Chris here. Grappa here. Hollenbeck here. Blackwood here. Brian Eggs here. Franklin here. McNally here. Okay. All uh, present. We can stand and the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Lisa, status report on the posting of this meeting, please. The agenda was posted in the upper and lower levels of the Emerson Community Center, the Cambridge Post Office, the Badger Bank, and the Village website. All right, looks like we're good to go then. Uh, I'm going to, did we want to move anything, Lisa, we were talking? Yeah, okay. if we want to Just move Mr. Whitmer up unless he wants to. You want to sit there through? for the whole week. I'll oh. make a motion to move <laughs> up 8A proclamation for Trustee Whitmer to where we are currently. Right. I'll second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Whitmer, we would ask that you come up here. And uh, first thing we want to do is, uh, how's school going? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's going. It's going. Yeah. Okay. All right. For those of you who are not aware, Eric was a uh, trustee and has served Cambridge admirably. And uh, we've got a proclamation for, uh, for you tonight. Uh, if it's all right, I'll, I'll just read this real fast here for you. Okay. Okay. You can read the whole thing? Yes, I, 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 yes. I, I, yeah, 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 it's not real long. It's, I love it. Did a good job. Thanks. It's a uh, Village of Cambridge proclamation service of Eric Whitworth. Whereas, as a longtime resident, Eric Whitworth has volunteered his services to the Village of Cambridge for many years. And whereas Eric began his service on the Village Board and including positions of President Pro Tem and the Village Representative on the Dane County Cities and Villages Association. And whereas Eric has served on numerous committees over the years, including water and sewer, audit and finance, public works, plan commission, cable, police and fire, joint law enforcement, among others. And whereas Eric and his wife Tracy are raising their three children in Cambridge and remain active in community events. And whereas Eric's hard work and dedication has helped maintain and enhance Cambridge and has made Cambridge a better place to work in, live in, and visit and his presence on the village board will be missed and whereas members of the village board look forward to working with Eric and other capacities now therefore I Mark McNally president of the village of Cambridge do recognize Eric Whitworth for his years of service to the village of Cambridge dated this eighth day of October 2024 nice. so, Eric. thank you all I can remember Eric coming to, uh, I think you were on the board. I was time. on the board, yeah, the first time. Mm -hmm. And Eric would sit, would sit in the in back. The back <laughs> and he was coming to these meetings, and I'm thinking, who is this guy? And he would just come, and, and he was absorbing it all in. And you did that for quite a while. And um, I, I don't even know how we got you on the board, but. Um, <laughs> they get you. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Okay, yes. sure. All right, Eric, you okay. want to stand up, please? Okay. All right, there you go. Oh, wow. You know. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's yeah. a thing. There you go. <laughs> All right, make sure you smile. All right, very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and then we get, is, where's the television? Uh, they're over there. Okay, yep. can you see us right here? Right here. Yep. Okay. Okay. okay, all right. Okay, good. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everyone. You will be sorely missed. You can turn that back in and still 
I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, plenty we'll of committee. Yeah, so. yeah, if I don't recall, you're at DOA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Well, I'll see you at work. <laughs> That's good. Um, I, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for the time that uh, I spent here. It was great getting know, to know all of you. Um, I do miss this. I don't miss the stress, but I do miss all of you. Um, so I wish you the best of luck going forward. You've got plenty of things on your board. Uh, plate right now so just want to say thank you right, thank you Eric you. you're missed maybe 10 or 15 years to come back okay oh my god that's good okay we'll uh, continue on with the agenda here public comment uh is there anybody that would like to come up and speak you may and we would ask that you introduce yourself we'll do that all right thank you Jenny Quimby, which yes. you and I have met. Yes, we have. Here. Jenny, um, uh, I'm going to say three minutes. Okay. Oh, I don't need that long. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I will be quicker than that. Want to make sure. okay. um, Jenny Quimby, uh, Mayor of Waterloo. I've been on the City Council since, uh, well, 16 years and nine years on the school board. And I am running for the open seat of the District 46, which obviously you are in. And that's why I don't need three minutes because I know how busy you guys all are back here because I've been doing that a very long time. And I've met some of you before, I think at some other meetings, fire meetings and stuff. So going to all 19 different villages and board meetings and city council meetings, we all have very much the same things in common. We all still need more state aid. We all care about our fire, EMS, and of course roads. And that goes for everything from municipalities to the townships. So that's what I'm interested in and that's what I'm running for is to figure out a better way to uh, uh, help us with aids for the schools as well as just the municipalities. I, my priorities are those things basically, not necessarily in that order, but fire and EMS are near and dear to my heart because we too are having a hard time in Waterloo making sure we have enough people, volunteers. We are dual trained, so we do both fire and EMS, so when that whistle blows, it's just a matter of which truck they go in. But we're trying to get that fourth person so that we can have better ships. So. Um, I've done a bunch of different interviews and I've met a lot of different people and I'm happy to say the Wisconsin State Journal endorsed me, which is very odd. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. So I was, you know, listed as someone that's most likely to have a greater effect across party lines. And as mayor, as well as you guys know here, it's all nonpartisan, but when you go to the state, you gotta pick a party. And I just wanna work like I do as a mayor for everybody, not just for a party. So I wanted to, Thank you for your time and hopefully have your vote. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank I've you, met Judy. Jenny. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. We would run into each other, League of Municipality. Are you going to be there in a couple weeks? Uh, well, they they stopped the. I know. You know. The, I know. So the, now it's just the national or whatever the yeah. annual one. Yeah. I, I I didn't see that much on there that would have relevance to where Cambridge is at right now. Okay. But I was always impressed with Jenny's willingness to talk to people and uh, her you know, your eagerness to get into some, some tougher issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought you did a great job, and we wish you uh, good luck here. Thank you the, very uh, much. Final weeks of your campaign. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Mark, I have a public comment. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, someone else. Nope. Uh, is, there, well, uh, if, is there anybody else that wants okay. to speak? Okay. Bill. I'm Bill Christ, a citizen of uh, Cambridge. <laughs> Um, here today to talk about two items I had requested to be on the agenda for tonight. As a trustee, I have every right to add items to the agenda, but was denied that. Um, so I just want to talk about those real quick. One is obviously the finances of the district. Just a quick recap. All our government funds were overspent in 23, and every government fund is in negative fund balance position. The general fund has spent over $1.1 million of cash reserves in the last six years and is currently broke. Every year we've overspent in the last six years. In fact, we've used $500,000 in 23 of the 24 taxes. We're in dire situation, people. You know, with fire and EMS, we all know they spent three to 500,000 of their cash reserves and everybody's up in arms. Yet the village spent 1.1 million and I can't even get a meeting on our docket. It's kind of ridiculous. I presented this data and information to the finance and audit committee last year on a couple times. I have emails to that effect, but no action was taken by them. And the situation's gotten a lot worse in the next year. 
The second topic I wanted to talk about was the uh, state statute of uh, budget requirements, minimum budget required, or required by the state. Cambridge is not following those. By not following those, we're actually hiding the above, the stuff I talked about above. We're keeping it away from the, our citizens' knowledge, which is wrong. In closing, I'd just like to ask, remind everyone here, Paul has said many times at many meetings, the most important duty of a trustee is to safeguard the taxpayers' funds, something to that effect. I'm, I want to reach out to all you board members and ask you to safeguard or make this a priority. Let's get it on the agenda. Let's figure out the solutions and let's move forward. Let's quit dodging the issues. And I ask the public, if they're concerned about this, this situation, to contact our trustees and ask them to do their job. Thank you. Can I address some? I no, know. I, 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 because we can't just. Here's, I have some not, background uh, information. Number one. It, if anybody uh, wants gonna, to see it. No, hold on. I've got two things. It's a point of order. Village board members are not supposed to do public comment. And I read that in, I don't remember if it was in the municipality magazine just this Sorry. month or what. So Bill going up there and, and doing that is, is quite, it should not have been allowed. So I, I get it. So if he's allowed to do that, I think we should be able to redress at least a couple of the things that he's, that he's well, stated. Well, if you're going to redress it, first of all, there's no give and take. I thought he was speaking as an individual. It doesn't as matter. A, as a village board member, you're not supposed to do that. Well, until I can be told otherwise, and I don't have the attorney, we're not allowed to have the give and take as the board members with the general public. So, you know, um, you'll have an opportunity. Okay, then I'll make a public comment then. You're a citizen. You if you make a public if you comment. want to make a public comment, but the problem is what I'm making isn't as a, as it's it's. I get your frustration, Bill. I get it. The audit and finance committee is the right place to start with this. We have it on our agenda tomorrow night. We are going to address it tomorrow night. I have gotten reports from Tammy. I've been looking up at where we've been doing our spending for this year. I didn't go into years past because I can't do anything about that. But for this year, I'm going moving forward for this year. I've, I've already got some ideas for tomorrow night on what we can do to try and save money. But bottom line is where the most of our dollars go is staff. So if you have some suggestions on what you'd like to see cut and which I, I staff to. Okay, all right, that, that, this is now where I, I've got to cut it off because right. we're not going to get into this no. open debate. No, I don't want to uh, do that. It's not an open debate. Okay, can I just finish then by the other state? So we are addressing that. And the other thing about the state statute and posting it, our staff has already recognized that they were missing something they have already told us that they are making adjustments to make sure that this year it will be reflected correctly. It was an oversight. It was not something that was intentional. They were using the same format that we have used year after year after year after year. So they were simply using, and because we've had such a high turnover in, in how many of our treasurers we've had, it doesn't surprise me. They're like, okay, what form did we use last <coughs> year? Let me fill that one out okay. and get right. it to the paper. All right. So, so that Let's has see. been addressed. All right. Thank you. I'm going to cut this off now. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak at this time? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Introduce yourself. So my name is Jackie Fry. I live at 707 Townsend Street here in Cambridge. Lived here my whole life and my kids' life and my son and daughter's life. And I just want to say that I um, echo what Bill has for concerns for our community, um, not only here but in a lot of different areas. And it makes me very sad to see it happening in our community and I also echo the fact that I hope everybody comes together once and for all and can just kind of figure things out because I'm not one to get it from the local restaurant or the local pub. I want to get it straight from the source and I think our community deserves that as well. So 
the old talk to me, not about me type of thing. So I feel like this problem has been swept under the rug for a long time. I don't know the history. I don't know all of that, but I'm hoping that we can sure find out because we can't go forward sometimes until we go backwards. So I'm just here to respectfully ask the village, the board, everybody to roll up your sleeves, dig in, and get this problem solved. Don't sweep it under the rug. Don't wait for it to next year to get solved. Let's, let's kind of dig in and say somebody's got to own it. Somebody's got to do something um, instead of he said, she said, we should have, could have, would have, if only Ida. It just doesn't work. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Is there anybody else that would like to, uh, to speak at this time? Fair warning. Okay, we'll close this portion of the meeting. Uh, moving on, uh, approval of the consent agenda. Uh, we've got the board minutes of the meeting September 24th, economic development joint meeting with Oakland, public works, personnel committee, and trick-or-treat hours. I'll make Trick a motion to approve the consent agenda. All right. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any concerns, questions, issues? Just yeah. want to make a note. The trick-or-treat hours is 5.30 to 7.30 on Halloween. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, is there anything else? Any other comments? Good. Okay. All those in favor of approval of the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. <coughs> All right, moving on. Uh, reports, President's report. Uh, last Friday, uh, we had another parade here in town, and uh, it was the homecoming parade. Um, I don't know. I, I think there must have been probably seven fire department. Uh, I don't know. Were you there? Did you see the parade? Uh, great, great event. Weather was fantastic. Um, it was run safely. Uh, they were getting the candy out. I didn't realize there were that many kids in the Cambridge schools. I, I think they must have had them all on floats. And uh, it was a, a wonderful afternoon, and it was run safely. Uh, afterward, um, I, it was asked of me, how come the memorial parade goes downhill and the homecoming parade goes uphill? I don't know, um, but that was the route that was taken, and it was safe. And I would like to thank our public works for getting barricades up because there was no parking along Water Street, which is a nice safety feature because that's where the parade traveled. So it was uh, well done. The, the, I think, believe that the routes are because the homecoming doesn't homecoming circle. It starts here. In it's, the yeah. And it starts at the park, and a lot of the school children are in the park, mm -hmm. whereas, and whereas the Memorial Day, the key is that it ends in Veterans Park. And so that's why it goes down the hill and then back up and around. Mm -hmm. So th that's the intent on why this the thing is different. That makes sense. I mean, I, I don't know. I wasn't on Main Street. I was over here on Water Street. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I thought, well, geez, they couldn't have started up at the high school. I mean, they'd all be worn out before they got <laughs> down here. Um, a lot of them uh, staged by the middle school, too. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. So it was a great event. Cambridge was in its splendor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a lot, of, a lot of good comments on that. So, uh, and we won the game. And we won the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the superintendent will be at our next meeting talking about uh, the school system. So, okay, village office updates. Uh, Lisa? Um, a lot of meetings. Um, I mean, that's everything that goes into the meetings. Um, working, obviously, on fire and EMS stuff, budget, um, Tammy's put been putting a lot of time in. Um, the staffing, um, I've been meeting with staff um, regarding the changes happening, election. Um, so far we've had 180 absentee requests. 66 have been returned. In-person voting will start on the 22nd. Um, the next month this will be heavy elections. What is the final day that people can come in and <coughs> vote? Um, the Friday before the election. Friday so. before. Okay. November 1st. All right. November 
refer. So the 22nd through the 1st, and then it's set by the state. Okay. Um. Okay. All right. Any questions for Lisa? Thank you. Uh, Treasurer's report. Let's uh, start with bills here. Uh, you want to give us a report, Pammy, please? Sure. Um, the bills that were over 5000 62770 and $0.04 went to the Fire and EMS Commission for the fourth quarter payment. 17545 and 93 went to MSA Professionals. 14624 and $0.93, Village of Deerfield. 14351 at Home Again, Cambridge. $8,924.33 to LRS. Our first run of bills was $101,493.22. The second run, $27,189.04. For a total of $128,682.26. Okay. All right. Help me out, please, somebody here. I'll make a motion to pay the bills in the amount of $128,682.26. All right. Second. All right. Got a motion to second. All right. Now we get into questions. Anybody see anything in the stack of bills that we have here? rise to a, a concern Anything? is the two percent for the fire department included in that in that bills that um, was cut, that was a, that that was cut separate okay. and I sent you guys a email okay. that okay. I cut that separate right after right. I think the last meeting because that's just a pass-through right correct mm -hmm. right. okay uh, no other questions roll call please Ryan Ick. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Blackwood. Yes. Helen Beck. Yes. Chris. Yes. Yeah. Yes. McNally. Yes. All right. Bills are paid. Uh, anything else that you want to share with us uh, today, Tammy? Um, I'm just I'm working on the budget a lot, and I don't disagree with what Bill is saying. We we need to do something. We need to look at it. And I look forward to tomorrow night's audit and finance committee meeting so that we can brainstorm and come up with some solutions um, to the problems and issues that we have and have known we have. So. All right. Any questions for uh, Tammy? Okay. Uh, we're going to jump into new business and we'll start with the Historic Preservation Committee. We've already covered Eric. Uh, the, uh, the committee has met. Um, and we're not in a position uh, tonight uh, to be able to share exact numbers. Um, it's actually been people that have been kind of, uh, the project is too much. We, we were looking at what we Fresh air, the project. Nobody yeah. knows what the project is. Oh. Uh, oh, I thought. You mentioned it a little bit last meeting. <coughs> okay. But, yeah. All right. Um, the Historic Preservation Committee uh, had its inaugural meeting uh, for our first time in I don't know, 20 years. And we're looking at the water tower. Um, the uh, the water tower is, it needs some work. And the old one yes, on South old, Street. Yes, up the, the street here. Um, we, uh, we got the, uh, the committee together. Um, there was an architect on there. Uh, we have uh, uh, some other individuals. And we are, the, the big project um, is the water tower itself. Um, we need to do something with that. Uh, we can either take it down or we can repaint it. So we are in the process of trying to get quotes on both. Uh, there is a, a party that's willing uh, to, uh, from what I understand, uh, to pick up a sizable portion of the, uh, the painting. And uh, I've also thought maybe this is an opportunity for people in the community, if they are interested, uh, to donate uh, to a, a specific cause to try to help us get that water tower uh, back to good condition. I've walked it. Uh, I'm not an architect, an engineer. It does have some surface cracks, uh, but the walls on that thing are, are like this around. I think, it, is that an octagon or a hexagon? It's a hexagon. Hexagon? All right, 
Uh, I've been inside. Uh, Todd, let me take a look at it. And um, we're, we're going to try to do something and try to get the funding and get that, that working. So we have brought on some uh, folks that were instrumental with the tower in Fort Atkinson. Uh, there's an individual that lives here in the community. And um, she'll be uh, helping us out. And because uh, they had redone their water tower when she was a resident. She's an architect. But now she lives here in Cambridge. So that's where we're at. No cost, no numbers. Um, it's a little bit more than a silo. Uh, if you're going to take that thing down. And so there are companies that, you know, that's as far as they're going. They don't want to mess around with, with uh, something of that size. Is that going to come before the board in the decision for the demo refit? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And one clarification for those of you that are new, that is not a working well. It is a vacated well. Um, I'm trying to do this without tower. No, uh, well. without any um, public dollars. This right. will all be privately raised. Like structurally, is it sound or does it need any work? It, it, that's where we're, okay. we're going to look into that. that. Any, yeah. As I said, there are some surface cracks, but I'm not an engineer, so right. that would have to be looked at. Okay. All right. That's where we're at with the. the Was there uh, any concern about lead paint or asbestos? Uh, that had come up, but um, it, it would have been an issue more. I, I don't know if they're going to sandblast it if, it, if <coughs> we can figure out how to save it. Um, in Fort Atkinson, just real quickly, there is an interior staircase that you can climb mm -hmm. to actually go up into the water tower, and you can look out these little ports. Um, I, th I have thought maybe we could do something, but when I asked Fort Atkinson how many days are they open for theirs, it's like two days a year. So it doesn't make sense to have access to, to folks to be able to climb up. So it would just be, you know, Aesthetic appeal from the outside. Right. Right. Yeah. More information will be forthcoming as the committee gets going. Um, all right. Any other questions? Thanks for reminding me. I thought we already had discussed this. I um, and all right. Uh, Jefferson County Library resolution. Uh, is this one uh, Lisa or is this Paula? Hi. So. So every year, um, so there are two ways that a municipal library can get their uh, can get their funding. One is for the counties to to charge taxes to the taxpayers directly, and it would basically be another line item on your taxes for that, it, or uh, for the amount that they deem both Dane County and Jefferson County uh, should be paid for for uh, the library. And then, or we as a village board can say, we're going to contribute that tax amount uh, of dollars into the library. Um, and if we're going to do that, uh, we need to do these declarations and then uh, get that into the counties prior to November 1st so that they don't uh, put on the tax bill uh, the charge for those taxes. And um, we, ha the Village of Cambridge has always done the mus municipal funding for that versus having the taxpayers, uh, or, or vers versus um, that being a line item on your taxes for, for the count that the county would then collect and give to the library. So that's what these are about. Okay. All right, and the uh, we have these here in our packet. At least I see the one for Jefferson and the other one here for Dane County. Correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, do we want to uh, have a motion to approve so these? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 202408 requesting exemption from Jefferson County Library tax. Right. I'll second. Any uh, concerns? I just have a question. Are we funding the same amount that the county would fund if they did it on their tax rolls? Or is it a different amount we're funding? It's the same amount. 
It's a, well, it depends. E each year we do, we, that's the minimum that we have to give them if we're doing these exemptions. We have to give the library the minimum of what they, they've told they us in been. here. Um, oftentimes, as a village board, we've, we've funded the library a little bit higher than that in order to provide the services for the community. How much higher? Do you know? Uh, last year, I think I think we were supposed to give like uh, like just under a hundred thousand, and I believe it was a hundred and five thousand that the village paid last year. <coughs> and what they did with that extra money is they opened up the library an extra, I think, two hours uh, most nights of the week. So that actually resulted in the library being able to have the library open more hours. Okay. Other questions? What's the minimum to exempt? Because it has that two stars on that form. Because it says we have we're in both counties, so yep. do, yeah. do you have to add something together? Fifteen counties is behind the next resolution. Yep. And then, so we add those. Is that? Yes. So we add. Yep. So we add the. Thousand two hundred and six plus the hundred and no the uh, hold on one hundred and five thousand for day. Okay. So it'd be one hundred and seven thousand something would be the minimum nope. that we can actually find. the hundred five is what we gave in two thousand. Oh, that's what we gave. Oh, I'm sorry. In twenty four. Reading it wrong. Um, ninety two five oh, ninety is the okay. minimum, and two thousand two hundred six. For okay. Jefferson, so, so it'd be the nine, 94, ninety four thousand would be the minimum seven. that we could, we could fund it. And I believe the library, just FYI, the library is asking to be funded in the same amount that the village funded it last year. That's what the library is asking for. For all the years I've been on this board, this has gone through. It's been approved, mm -hmm. so we're better off with this approach. Okay, any other questions? All right, all those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Jefferson County carries. Now we'll get into Dane County. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 202407, resolution requesting exemption from the Dane County library tax. I'll second that. All right, any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right, thank you. Uh, and then 8E, appointment of election workers. Uh, we have two, Betty Bush and Tiffany Bauer McDonald. Anything? I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of the two noted election workers. A second. All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. Okay, moving on, unfinished business. Uh, Economic Development Committee Ordinance. Um, I, we're just getting you on there, Brian. I don't know, do you wanna talk about this or do we wanna? This is a result of our last meeting when we were changing the guidelines for what professions people had to be and where they lived or worked. The board had wanted to change it you know, get rid of those things and change it to have a vested interest in the village. So this doesn't have it, to do with what it's we're doing in the meeting. It's no. the setup of the committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments, Brian? Or, uh, in favor of this? Yep. Okay. Okay, I need a motion, please, somebody. I I'll a mo go ahead. Sorry. I'll make a motion that we approve the change to the Economic Development Committee Ordinance. I'll second that. Okay. Any questions? Do we have to be concerned about what vested interest means? I mean, I was <laughs> the one who suggested that terminology, <laughs> but in reading it back, I'm like, are we, are we okay? Any appointments right. would ultimately still, come before the board. Or so or we have to analyze if it yeah. makes a sense. If their okay. interest is. Yeah. All right, that makes me feel better. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Explain it better. I like it. Thank you for clarifying, for reminding me that. <laughs> okay. It was your idea. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, Fire Commission update. Thank you. Uh, the last meeting, uh, we went to the 
Wait, wait. Was there a vote on there this? There wasn't a vote on this. Okay, we didn't vote on this one? No. Okay, I'm sorry. We have a motion and second. We have a motion and second. All right, all those in favor of the uh, Economic Development Committee ordinance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now we'll go on, Chris. Yeah, we uh, sat through a, a very long meeting of uh, going over each line item for the, for the budget. Uh, initially, there was some debate on whether or not they make the budget for three communities. Uh, ultimately, we decided to make it for all five <coughs> communities. And, um, you know, a lot of times I, I can't really describe the nuances that go on in these meetings without uh, uh, reliving it, and I'd rather not relive that. So um, <laughs> let's just say that they have a proposed budget, and it was brought forward to to us. I believe it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be on a closed session item. Um, no, the budget is the budget budget. Is open. Yeah. Oh, the budget is to oh. vote on open oh. in open session. Um, but as you know, from our standpoint, uh, from a Cambridge standpoint, I made no commitments uh, without conferring with with my board first. So, uh, what's presented here is what the outcome was of that meeting. Are they, are they looking for us to approve the budget at this point? Because isn't this just a proposed, or is this the budget? This is the proposed budget. So the email that we received said it was for boards to consider and, and respond. And bring back to the to, commission. Um, overall, it is a 36% increase with all five communities <coughs> included. Our share quarterly would go from 62 to 41 to 84, 682. I, I would be. I think it's a non-starter. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, if I need a motion, I'll make a motion to not approve the budget. Yeah. And say they need to go back to the drawing board because a 36% increase. I mean, we have a levy limit. Yeah. If, if we do a 30% increase here, we're going to have close library. Mm -hmm. Which, thing? <laughs> one thing to take to the legislature is levy limits are killing a very small community. Um, went up 59%. We are. Is there a time when they want to have a vote on that? budget or is there so they want to get feedback to the next meeting and then what are the next steps I mean ultimately there's they're supposed to have a, a budget by per the IGA it has to be approved by what October 31st I'll second Paul's yeah. motion okay. so my question on this budget, Chris, do you know, because I know there's also ongoing uh, negotiations for contract with the union. E the union? Yeah. Were the dollars that are being discussed for the union included as part of this, con this no, budgeting? No, because they're still in negotiations right now. I went through the first, myself and Mr. Schrader uh, were the representatives for the commission. And we went through the first round uh, of talks with the union. Um, those talks were positive, but uh, they were tabled. Uh, the union wanted to discuss it with their members, and we're supposed to have another another meeting uh, forthcoming. I mean, you know. have they? I mean, if that budget, I mean, if that contract passes at that rate, shouldn't that be what they impact that budget number? Right, shouldn't that be what they're budgeting based on? So I, I think they're not even budgeting on the correct numbers. Right. I, I would concur with that. Okay. Well, they're not even budgeting on the correct number of municipalities. They hmm. should be budgeting on three municipalities. But you can it next year. Can you speak up? I can't. I said they should be budgeting on three municipalities, not five. We're, as of now, we're not in the commission next year. So they should put a budget together that tells them this is what the three are going to have to pay next year, which I think if they did that, it would be eye-opening to them. Because let's, yeah, let's flip the... If, if, they, if they looked at it mm -hmm. with all their fixed costs, they're going to have a 200% increase in their levies. 
the other thing. I would I, push them to do a budget with three of them. Yeah. The thing that I'm noticing is at Lake Mills, it's 52,000, but that's that's six percent. That's not including all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. That is just EMS. And so. that's sixty dollars per capita for and EMS. They, but that contract it ends at the end of this year. There's no way they can renew that contract at that rate. I mean, that's, Absolutely not. That it, we were guaranteed that they were going to pay for themselves, and they are not. Okay, so if we vote this down as far as this budget, what happens? Well, I think it's it's a responsible it's a responsible move on Cambridge's part to give some feedback back to the commission, saying, you know, there's too many variables right now that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. One being what Paula brought up about the. The union contract uh, bill brings up a great point about well, what what does the numbers look like with three communities as it stands right now? Mm -hmm. um, if anything, it's going to show the rest of the commission that um, there's a lot of unanswered questions when it comes to this budget. So, I mean, I, I don't just, know if that answers your question. Or not. Well, and, and the other thing is, is there a are we sending a message if we're voting on this? that we see ourselves in the commission in 2025. Well, at, at this point, we are still in the commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we if you just go on that route, we're, saying, we're, we're doing it because we're still in the commission. Yeah. And so you brought the it to us. We have, mm -hmm. we have so the IGA, the IGA. For the IGA, the IGA you brought it mm -hmm. to us, and we're telling you we're not approving it. There's just too many unanswered variables yeah. right now. Yeah, I think we can take that out, Mark. I think one of the things that concerned me during that meeting was it, as they were going through line by line, it was members of the community that were providing things that they had, line items that they had missed. Yeah. Like, what, a hundred and, and some thousand and 186, loan payments yeah. and things like that. So. If that, that, because they projected it off of like year to date, so it was through September 1st or something like that, those payments don't get paid until third, fourth quarter. So they didn't have those in there. So my concern is if those payments weren't in there, what else is missing? Mm -hmm. But did they add them in this document they sent? In this one they did, yeah. Okay. You know, but you see the, I mean, the 2023, I believe the proposed budget for 2023 was like 1.3-ish. Mm -hmm. And they came in at 1.8. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, and just... that's the budget that we're supposed to be operating off of right now because we didn't approve the 2024 budget. The budget we're supposed to be operating off now is the 1.3 because that was the last budget that was approved. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter that they spent more in 2023, right? right? right. Somehow you can think to get that. Mm -hmm. But well, it's also it's also important to note, and Lisa, back me up on this, but we have not paid extra so far. No, <coughs> we have just received our quarterly bills as as um, stated. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been some rumor and conjecture floating out there in the wonderful world of Cambridge that, you know, we're paying extra and we have not mm -mm. reached that that yet. So is there a possibility with what happens with the union? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. But we're not there yet. All right. So we have a motion and a second to not um, agree to this 36% increase. Any further discussion? Uh, this is money, but are, are we just uh, it's it back? You it's know. not spending money. So, okay, um, let's just vote collectively then. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to not, not enter into this? Not to approve the budget. Yes. Uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we have a 36% jump that we're looking at. Uh, Jackie, uh, or Jenny, you have a, you said 
fifty percent over in Waterloo? The first one that they turned in was like fifty nine percent. It was it, it just I just flat out rejected it. So they too are going through a new union. There's three of them because we gave them a new person last year, but now they chose to go into the union. So we're having the same thing. We can't we can't do numbers until we know what they're doing with the union, and we've got the same problems with our other townships that pay into it. We can't even give them a number right now. So. Mm -hmm. We're, we're back to having conversations about it too, trying to figure it out. But it's mostly to do because they all want full-time people, mm -hmm. which we know we all have a hard time even just getting volunteers anymore in yeah. anything. So we're all in the same boat. All right, well. That's what I'm concerned about too. Your boat's got a slightly bigger hole in it than ours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, financially speaking. Yes. Okay. All righty. Uh, is there anything else here, Chris? you want to share with us at this no, time? Uh, no, the rest of the items are going to be in uh, item 13. Okay. Next meeting. Closed. What? August 8th. Eight. Or August. August. October 18th. 18th, I want to say it is. Something like that. Right. 16th. Sorry. Okay. Then it's fire they all kind of run yeah. into each 16th. other. I encourage everyone to go. Yeah, it's... Um, can we request the next time they send us another budget that they make it more readable? Yeah. That yeah. I didn't think I printed off all those papers that were just run on. I mean, mm. be because, I, you know, I realize there is one, there is some, but I have no idea what, what feels those are. Those are. So and I put things on one page and right. it was and then it's so small. So if they could provide it to us in a more readable format, that would be so, so helpful. Yeah, if you would have went to the meeting, we ended up, uh, instead of projecting it on a wall, oh. we ended up having it on a, a TV screen. Mm -hmm. And they were plugging in each item as we were going through. So. Wow. All yeah. right. It's fun. Anything no. else for Chris? All right. Thank you for okay. your perseverance. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on, item 10, correspondence. I don't see anything, so we'll move to questions, referral to staff. I was copied on a letter that someone had asked, I think it was Zach, asked to read at the meeting. I didn't bring it with the correspondence. Yeah, we know. Yeah. I did send that to all board members today. It wasn't on the agenda, so and usually, usually we don't read verbatim correspondence, but I did send it to all board members and it was included in the audit finance packet. Okay. Why aren't we reading it, I guess, if the person asked it to be read? Because I received it today and it's not on the agenda. I didn't have anything in the packet or, um, it's not in the packet. I didn't, I didn't get it. I mean, I, but yeah, I printed you, my, you my packet off. It. You were copied on the email where the Zach had email. asked, it's in a long chain of emails, Zach had asked if his correspondence could be included. He wanted audit and finance things on this agenda too, and I responded that it was going to go to audit and finance committee tomorrow, okay. which he disagreed with and asked for his response to be um, read under public comment. I received that today. The agenda wasn't was set already. Um, I can read it. I have it up. Um, can you read it? Um, how long is it? It's not that long. Mm -hmm. Let's let's just go ahead and read it then. Okay. I'm gonna put try to do your voice, Zach. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> By the way, I sent it Wednesday. Okay. Good. All right. I, it says, hi, Lisa, thank you for your response. I understand the role of the Audit and Finance Committee in overseeing these matters. However, I want to emphasize that the discussions around our financial concerns have already started during the September 24th Village Board meeting, and the urgency of our current financial situation requires prompt and comprehensive action. This is a critical issue that affects every resident of our community, and it is important for us to tackle it head on and, and with transparent and transparently present uh, and transparently present the challenges we are facing. Deferring this to a committee without bringing it to the broader public forum of the village board delays the necessary dialogue and solutions our community urgent, urgently needs. 
I respectfully request that the matter be added to the upcoming Village Board meeting agenda so that all residents and stakeholders can be made aware of the gravity of our financial position and the steps that need to be taken. Thank you for considering this urgent request, Zach Pulling. And it was the email before that that I wanted to get. Okay. That one's really long. Oh. <laughs> that one is, uh, that one is, yeah. All right, well, we can read it if you want, Mark, <coughs> it's your choice. Uh, it's, how, how long is this one? I, here's here's the problem I think with reading it and, and I and because I read it back and I get it I think the problem is reading it's not about it getting it it's about respecting me as a resident and I respect you as a resident so read it hmm. I'm afraid that it's oh. not going when you start talking the numbers I don't know that that's going to come across well in a reading so that was all that was my only statement that I was going to say and I will say precedent it's and by precedent, we have never read know. every it's correspondence no. that we get yeah. from from people during correspondence. The point is, is that this, we are at a critical moment here, and we're just delaying. Um, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not and we're addressing it tomorrow at Audit and Finance. We have a meeting. It is on the agenda tomorrow night's Audit and Finance, which is open to the public, so the public can come and, and observe at the Audit and Finance meeting as well. It was posted 5.30. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tomorrow? Yes. yes. But I'll let you know tomorrow there won't be any back and forth because Paula. meetings aren't supposed to have back and Paula, forth. Paula, as the chair, um, maybe a yes. solution, if you don't mind, is maybe I can read this. I'm on, I'm on audit and finance as well. Maybe I can read this tomorrow at audit and finance. If you want. That and I work. did send it to all uh, board members today. All right. Um, yep. That worked. Okay. And then just looking for a response on my inquiries below in the email. All right. Plan of action. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do. All right. Okay. I'll take this up again tomorrow night. Uh, are there any other matters of correspondence? No. Okay. Uh, questions, referrals to staff, uh, future agenda items. We've got the room tax coming up. Dr. Banker will be here uh, at our next meeting to talk about the Cambridge school system. Fee schedule resolution and the quick trip liquor license. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else? What yeah. happened to the follow up on the trail? Uh, it was on last trail? month. The bike, the bike trail, trail. Was on last year's as a follow up. It's been on there like okay. three or four months now as a follow up. All right. Uh, I don't see any reason we can't have an update. What's, what's on the that? What's the question? Is it, is it the so the, the, issue, the issue is that and I, and it, uh, that um, Cambridge was, was left paying for some of the bike trail that we were not supposed to pay for. How much? And yeah. Like $32,000 yeah, and something. Yeah, a bit over. Okay. Yeah, and, so, and yeah. so Laura Payne and Kate McGinnity um, had told me that uh, uh, if you know, staff reaches out or had told me that they would try and, and raise money to pay to, you know, pay the village back for that amount because it wasn't the intent for the village to have to pay. We would just be in the fiduciary to mm -hmm. pay the bills and things like that was the intent. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at one point we had to ask staff to reach out to them and talk to them about that. So if you can just follow up on that. Yeah, we can get the spreadsheet. I know Brian. We had looked, Brian, from Town and Country, and uh, and our spreadsheets were five thousand dollars off. And last I had talked to Brian, we didn't quite know where that five thousand was. But oh, so you're trying to figure out what that dollar amount is that yeah. you need to ask them about? Um, Got it. All right. So we'll have that on next Mark meeting Mark to be able to have a discussion. Yes. All right. Is uh, is Eller's going to be? Eller's going to be at the Auden Finance. Tomorrow, if they get back and when they can, I have not heard back from him yet. And I would ask for a uh, personnel meeting, just TBD right now, mm -hmm. please. Okay, that's underneath meetings here. Anything else as far as future agenda items? 
All right. Upcoming meetings, October 9th, Audit and Finance tomorrow, October 9th, Library Board, October 10th, Joint Meeting with Oakland. Find out where they're at. The 14th is Plan Commission, 15th, Water and Sewer, 22nd, Historic Preservation Committee, and October 22nd, we'll also have a Village Board meeting. November 5th is the election, and November 7th, Economic Development Committee. Um, which takes us to item 13 on our agenda. I but will make a motion to convene into closed session per 19.851 ECHO, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. This is Fire and EMS Commission. And per 19.851 Charlie of the Wisconsin statutes to consider the employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of the village employees, public works position, health care renewal, administrator review. Okay. Got a motion? I'll second that. All right. Discussion? Roll call, please. Franklin? Yes. Blackwood? Yes. Colin Beck? Yes. Christ? Yes. Krakow? Yes. Reinig? Yes. McNeil? Yes. We're going to take a 10-minute recess. I'll allow